Hello everyone, I'm Robin Pearson and I'm here to show you what remains of the Church of the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. This is part three of our series on the Hagia Sophia. Today we take a guided tour around the galleries of the building, exploring the sites that remain from the Byzantine era. If you'd like to know more about the history of the building, check out part one. If you'd like a guided tour of the ground floor, check out part two. The way to reach the galleries is via a ramp at the north end of the inner narthex. Seven paved inclines wind in an anti-clockwise direction high up into the building's interior. Surprisingly, I found this one of the most exciting parts of visiting the Hagia Sophia. It felt immersively medieval to be climbing the building this way and imagining the famous figures who once shared these corridors. The ramp will take you to the west end of the North Gallery. For most of the Byzantine era, men and women were separated during church services. Curtains hung in different parts of the aisles was one way to keep the genders apart. The other was to send the women upstairs to the gallery. It's one of the overlooked parts of the famous mosaics from Ravenna. Although Justinian and Theodora are presented as both taking part in the procession, there is an attendant here opening a curtain which he expects the women to disappear behind before the liturgy begins. So, while the emperor was down in the south aisle, the empress and her retinue were up here. If you make your way to this commanding, if distant spot, you'll share the perspective we believe the empress enjoyed during many services. Looking down the south gallery, we come to an elaborately decorated marble doorway. You can see vines, grapes, and dolphins carved into it. I've not been able to find out when, but at some point it acquired the nickname the Gates of Heaven and Hell. One theory being that the floral decoration to the right of the door represents paradise, while the unadorned left-hand side showcases damnation. But this may be a later tradition with nothing to do with the Byzantines. The door seems to have kept this part of the galleries closed to the general public. We believe it was used by the patriarch staff, and as we'll see in a moment, the imperial family. Moving through the gates, we begin to get our best view of the dome, and appreciate the giant space the church encompasses from this new angle. The dome is 56 metres above the ground. You could fit the Leaning Tower of Pisa, or the Statue of Liberty, without its base in this space. For those interested in architecture, this may be the best place to absorb the clever use of semi-domes and pendentives to help carry the weight of the dome. Check out episode 22 of the History of Byzantium podcast for more information. From the ground, your eye may perceive the dome to be a symmetrical sphere, as you'd expect it to be. But from the galleries, you can begin to spot the irregularities in its appearance. This is a result of the relentless seismic activity which the dome has had to deal with. Though the dome still has 40 ribs and 40 windows, they are not all survivors from the same work. Different sections date from restorations in the 6th, 10th and 14th centuries. In the BBC PBS documentary Ancient Invisible Cities, these irregularities were mapped, giving us a truer sense of the surface of this battered marvel. When you've finished gawping at the dome, have a look at the marble balcony you've been leaning on. Over the centuries, many people have carved their names or initials into the surface. The most interesting to historians is this runic inscription, carved using the symbols of the pre-modern Scandinavian alphabet. Scholars have made out the name Halvdan, but otherwise aren't sure what the rest of the sentence says, the most popular theory being the classic Halfdan was here. What kind of Scandinavian man would have had time and opportunity to whittle away up here undisturbed? Speculation has it that Halfdan was a member of the Varangian Guard, 
imperial bodyguards from the 10th century onwards. Other runes have been found in the building, as well as dozens of other graffiti carvings, which are slowly being studied. Turning around, we see the Deasis mosaic, which we'll cover in our next video. But when you've finished admiring its splendour, turn around and look down. There on the floor, you'll see the name Enrico Dandolo. Dandolo was the Doge of Venice who led the Fourth Crusade to Constantinople in 1204 AD. This led to the sack of the city and an occupation by Western forces for the next half century. The elderly Dandolo died in the city and was buried in the Hagia Sophia. As far as we know, no one else had enjoyed the honour of being buried in the cathedral itself, and when the Byzantines regained the city, they are said to have thrown his bones out. This engraved sarcophagus lid was placed here in the 19th century by an Italian restoration team who believed that this was the location of his original tomb. Moving to the end of the gallery, we see the famous imperial mosaics, suggesting that this was the area of the church where the rest of the royal family would gather during services. It seems that a walkway connected the palace to an entrance around the east window of this gallery. If you walk all the way to the corner of the gallery, you will get the best view possible of the apse mosaic of Mary and the Christ Child, though on my last visit to the city this area was under restoration. If you have a look behind you, you'll get a nice sense of the rest of the building struggling to cope with the weight of the dome. Several columns up here in the galleries have bent under the strain. Backtracking all the way to the top of the ramp, you can now explore the North Gallery. As you can see, it's been undergoing restoration work for some time, but there is one mosaic to see, as we'll discuss in our next video. When you get to the end of the gallery, the ramp will take you back down to the North Isle. That's all for our tour of the galleries. In our next video, we look at the amazing mosaic decoration that lights up every corner of the building. If you'd like more detailed information about the Hagia Sophia, then visit thebyzantinelegacy.com. It's a fantastic website providing breakdowns of the Byzantine buildings that can still be seen today, and there you'll find many of the still images and sketches used in these videos. <laughs>